My sneakers to the ground, I do not jump, I move the earth down Bear witness to the genius of my sound Born at the bottom, but now I'm knocked down Look, I'm a call it swagger I slip through time zones like a crook and dagger Mad rubies on my chain, you can see your pain Bubble in blood, bang your girls in my head Because she's been on my campaign That's right, six figures in my back pocket And that's right, one million in my safe deposit That's right, I'm trill all day I'm my way to Happy Master Thursday! Yeah, we are sitting here in the studio watching the Masters on the TV. We have uh, phone calls coming in. We have had all kinds of technical issues and stuff uh, we are here it's Thursday and we have some Clemson news to talk about today so first I am Zach Clemson joined as always by Jason Reister Jason without us going into too much detail here. I think that you are doing uh, <clears throat> a little uh, break or something this weekend. So, I mean, why don't you share there uh, just you know, how crazy your day has been. I, I think you mean week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, week or month or year or whatever. Yeah, it never ends in my house, bro. Never <laughs> ends. I got called at 1230 Saturday night after the spring game. I'm in the bed. I got something going on at the house. It's just say medical thing. and Got to jump in the truck and rush home. And it's 4 o'clock in the morning when I get home. Dealt with that for a couple of man. I, I got all kind of health issues <laughs> going on around my house with, with with a person and a dog, and I it's it's been one thing after another, man. It just don't ever let up. <laughs> yes, it has. <clears throat> uh, you know what? You are going to get a little you know, right all that this weekend. And you come up here and watch the Tigers take on the uh, <clears throat> NC State of So, yeah, just count down those hours. Yeah, normally I'd be leaving out today, but you know, 
circumstances are preventing that. So I'm going to hold off another day and head out tomorrow. Cross my fingers that I'll be able to stay there the entire duration of the planned visit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, D, uh, he just senses he's sorry to hear that you're having that uh, Appreciate that. Yeah. So, since, you know, we are kind of uh, you know, talking, uh, hey, uh, your weekend and coming out here, you know, to help cover the uh, series. <clears throat> Obviously, the Tigers lost. Tuesday night to USC State. <clears throat> Guess, yeah. Is there any reason not to say a uh, hack? Uh, no. Is man. there any concern? On your side, I think many not, tires lose like that. Not really, man. I, I get it. The bullpen, you know, it, it kind of faltered a little bit in game three against Notre Dame and, and then again on Tuesday. But, yeah, I, I don't think there's there's any reason to hit the panic button. Um, You know, Reed Garris is actually – he's one strike away from getting out of that jam Tuesday night, and, and he throws a fastball, and he, he leaves it a little bit up in the zone, and it gets – smacked out of that thing man he's up 0-2 it's the mistake pitch you know I, I do think there's one guy out there that's struggling and, and that's Rob Hughes he's, he, he gave up that walk off home run to Miami and he's not looked the same since he's struggling a little bit um, yeah and you're going to see Austin Gordon take over as the closer yeah we've already seen that you know yeah. he, he pitched twice over the weekend Um, you know it, Seemed like they wanted they wanted to try to move Hughes into maybe more of a setup role, and he's just on the struggle bus right now a little bit. You're not going to get Tristan Smith back this weekend. No telling how long Andrew Chufo is going to be out. Package wouldn't even give a timeline on him Tuesday night, but on the positive side, it does look like you you might or will probably get Smith back next weekend. But um, I think Matt Marshall's performed pretty well in his absence, as has Darden for the most part. But, you know, it, I kind of side with what Eric Back has said after that game Tuesday night. When when, you, when you're playing the way Clemson's been playing and then you see what happened on Sunday where they give up the big lead but yet still find a way to win, maybe it's good to get served with a little bit of humble pie right here. You know, you, you, you give up the big lead again and or not the big lead, but um, mm-hmm. your bullpen – you know, gives up some runs on Tuesday night and you lose. And maybe it, it ends up being a good thing for them. You know, they, they've lost three games all season long. I, I think we're far from being <laughs> getting ready. I think we're far from being in a spot where you need to hit the panic button. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you had Kentucky, I think, uh, Florida, Clemson, and there was another – Team, yeah, lose Tuesday night. So, yeah, traditionally, those uh, new games are always tough. They are generally easier for the uh, lesser team to kind of give her. And so, I think you saw. Exactly, but you know, you kind of expect it to see. And something that's getting overlooked a little bit in Tuesday night's game, that USC Upstate team can mash. They yes, can absolutely they can. rake, man. That <laughs> they, they hit over 300 as a team. There's a ton of power in that lineup. And Clemson's pitching is pretty much – has done a pretty good job against them. They played three times this season. They've done a pretty good job against them in the first two games. 
you know, Upstate's seen them three times now. They've seen Billy Barlow twice in a week. So it, in baseball, you're going to see that sometimes, especially when, when you got that kind of familiar, familiarity. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, Clemson yeah, yeah, has exactly – yeah, you know, what they are in this team. I think that Eric Rakish uh, is doing a hell of a job. And so, you know, there is zero need to hurry or panic if you're a tiger. So just keep showing up. To the stadium, honestly, yeah, <clears throat> we are so confident in this team. We actually have our sales team out uh, selling, yeah, the college World series of packages. So, yeah. This team still has everything they need to get to Omaha. And honestly, I think to in the whole thing, I mean, you're talking about this team, like you said, has lost three games and they're without Smith, they're without Tuha. They had camera, you know, injured. Up. And, yeah. So, I mean, this is a team that really you have yet to see them have everything all together. And they're yes. still out there, you know, killing it. That's another thing that gets a little overlooked. I, I don't know that they've had the full arsenal all at one time yet. You know, Reed Garris is just getting back. Um, he's supposed to be a big part of that bullpen. Nolan, the Rockies been hurt a lot. Um, you mentioned Chufo, who's been out the last couple games. Um, Cantarella's he, he's going to be banged up, although it hadn't really affected him at the plate. Um, you know, there, there's been some guy, and then Tristan Smith, who's been, had been out. You know, a few week, couple weeks now, um, they they've missed some key pieces at times, but they just keep plugging right along. And if they can ever get fully healthy, it, it looks yeah, like Garris it's is going up. to scare. It, it looks like Garris is there. You know, it looked like it took him a little bit to get to to, to work back up or get stretched out, but his velocity's back now. Um, and once you get Smith back, and hopefully Chufo's not out too long because he's been really good there at shortstop. And he, he's kind of one of those unheralded guys that doesn't get talked about a lot, but he's been a big part of that success in that lineup this year. But um, once they get – if they can get fully healthy and get everybody back, that's a dangerous lineup, one through nine. Mm-hmm. Especially when you got a guy like Jared Purify in the nine spot. <laughs> that is a yes. big, That is a dangerous lineup, <laughs> one through nine. Yes, it is. And who had him as their uh, player of the year? This guy. <laughs> my guy's my guy still got the higher back. <laughs> <laughs> but my guy's been slumping mightily, man, yeah. since he went out with the with the hand injury. He, yeah. he did knock one out Tuesday <laughs> night though, no Rocky. He did he did jack one out Tuesday night. Yeah. See, I'll say yeah. this, man. Purify once he's gotten into the lineup, man, he he his defense is second. Has just gotten so much better than it was <clears throat> four yeah. weeks ago. Whenever he first they first plugged him in there, you can tell his comfort level has just improved dramatically. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I think that has to do with just you know getting to play every day. Oh, yeah, at a position he's not played a whole. You know, yeah. he's a shortstop, had played a ton of second base. He just needed to get out there and do it. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, 
It's honestly hard to argue with this kind that, yeah. I go back to the past. Yeah, I was going to say you're. Hey, looking at 2002. That, that's how, that's what I was going to say. You know, maybe as far back as 2002. That was the last time Clemson got off to this kind of start that year. Eric Backett spent in Clemson with Jack, on Jack Leggett's side. <laughs> that's how far you got to go back. Although, you know, they've had some really good teams since then. Don't get me wrong. But, um, <clears throat> probably one or two that should have made deeper runs than they did. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this, no doubt about it. This is the best team they've had up there in a long time. Yes, it is. And I to mention this, honestly, you know, is at least a hurry. Uh, the most. Fun teams to watch. And you are talking about a team that is never out of the game, that has fight and a determination that really you haven't seen a lot. Oh, no, there's no quit in this team. You know, and I hate to say this, but it's the brutal truth. You take this team, this same exact team, and, and put the previous coaching staff back in place. They don't win a bunch of the games they've won this year. There's a lot of games they just will, they would have wielded in, going judging by the way they played mm-hmm. in front of that staff. But I just think that's how much of a difference – this coaching staff has made man there's just a whole different there's a whole different mindset there's a whole whole different culture even though eric back has talked a lot about not having to change much culture wise when he took over i think he's changed a ton man he's so detail oriented and it's so much focus on the mental aspect and it's paid off big time for those guys on the field this year yeah exactly i yeah Lee and his hooker, like, you're talking, hey, uh, they trying just to think through the schedule so far this year. And they are a, a 500 team. It may be, you know, because all to come from behind wins this team <clears throat> has. Yeah. I don't know that they had that no, under, under no, the last regime. You know, no. those, those teams were not as mentally tough as these teams are. No. They didn't play with the same fire, heart, determination. And those are things that you cannot measure. Yeah. Yeah. They are soft and, yeah, mentally weak. And also, I think that, uh, the style of you know play didn't have that because you're talking a uh, under the a team that just tried to wait and wait and wait on the three uh, hour instead of manufacturing runs stealing aces and you know getting the other team into a pressure situations that they can handle. Yeah, Monty was a big analytics guy. He he wanted to play for one or two big innings. They played station to station and, and waited on the long ball. That's not this team's makeup at all. That's not the, that that is not the identity of this team. You, you see them right often, put just trying to put the ball in play. They'll go the other way with it. They'll they'll move guys over when they need to. There's no selfishness, man. It's all about the team. There's no me guys on 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 that team, man. 
they're fun to watch. They're fun to watch. It is there's a little you get you get a little bit of a feeling of some old school, old school baseball sometimes watching them. You know, they don't do the bunting and all that kind of stuff, but you know, there's some they, they play with some of the traits that that I grew up watching and you know the the game that I loved. Yeah, exactly. I I think that is truly an existing so special is just that old school mentality they have. Yeah, they again. You you can't put a you can't. You know we we it, with today's athletes, man. A lot of times in a bunch of sports, you get so focused on the measurables. You know things you can measure. Mm-hmm. But, but there's a lot of things about this team again that you can't measure, and, and that's why they're so successful. Because that's that's what this that's that's what this team's made of. Those, those those types of things that you can't measure, just the the never quit, the heart, the determination. Just you know, you, you combine that with the talent and, and the coaching, and you're gonna have a lot of success. Yeah, and the last thing I say about this team is. They genuinely seem to enjoy each other, enjoy Eric and thank for him. And so I think that, you know, just in the interviews that we have done with them, there is such a camaraderie and respect for each other is never a, a you know a first thing is always talking about what the other guys did or you know to hell and then you always see them you know, talking about Eric and kind of his hand and his calling influence on them. So I think that is truly refreshing. You know, in the FSU series, I keep going back to how they said that, you know, when they were down huge, that there is not a yelling or screaming in the dugout. It was like Eric just called them together and said, "All right, let's go." And yeah, he, he told them we're fixing to bat around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there yeah. is just complete, total buy-in into yeah. everything he's selling, his vision. That's the kind of respect they have for him. And when you got that kind of leadership, it makes it so much easier. Yes, it has. In case you're wondering, the douche of all douchebags, uh, is leading the Masters. <clears throat> so, you know, obviously, the Tigers have, you know, NC State coming in this weekend. Used to be a, guess, you know, much tougher series than it is now. Elia Avance no longer there. Me, you know. Do you expect the Tigers to have any trouble this weekend? Uh, I I always expect them to to take at least two out of three, man. You know, yeah. but this is this is a team that's coming in that has lost five straight. Those those are the dangerous kind of teams, you know. They come in with nothing uh, to lose. They come yeah. in with nothing to lose, yeah. man. I, yeah, I see, this, see, see this, you're so full of it. I know, man. They, they couldn't. You are who you are. 
and he lost five straight and started you from losing eight. So. Nothing. I'm just saying that they come in with nothing to lose, man. That those types of teams can be dangerous ones. They you they get you can overlook them. But what I was gonna say is that this this Clemson team has shown a tendency to not overlook anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is a another refreshing thing to see. Is they honestly like this team? You're rising, or I guess I should say the Eric uh, uh down is down as a uh, you know, coach. <laughs> Similar, absolutely. You know, and this this North Carolina State team comes in. They got a six point seven three team ERA, man. Six point seven three. They do yeah, got one. If you got know one I think that, that is not good. They 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 do got one starter that's pretty good. Um, same Sam Highfield. He's got a three point seven two ERA. He's he's three and one on the season. But but other than that. It's mediocre to bad numbers when you look at their pitching numbers. <clears throat> yeah. So that kind of takes us out of the baseball talk. So let's kind of get to this. You know, the ACC and Clemson have obviously, you know, with each other this offseason. And the with string uh, put all over thinking yeah, you're going to start seeing the errors and, and the these insiders coming out with you know Clemson's hey the SEC Clemson's hey here FSU is hey here so I want to get to this real quick. So a guy named C.W. Lambert who runs inside the Alito uh, came out yesterday with a huge long thread on uh, X or Twitter saying he has some legit inside information from a source in the source industry that he wanted to disseminate. And so he says that his sources say that he has seen has a hurst issue, Clemson, and the ACC, a a, a cell and allowing the Tigers and the Cells to leave the ACC whenever they want. However, yes, and and ESCN record deal is only possible if FSU and Clemson leave her the SEC. So he honestly has like God, I may tell uh, teeth in the sir 
However, that is such the you know, ridiculous shit that you're going to hear this season. Yeah, David Hale's already kind of uh, slapped him on the wrist. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm like, okay. So, first off, when did ESCN you know, start you know, negotiating this shit and, and kind of, you know, acting as a mediator? I mean, that isn't their role. They, honestly, you're telling the ESCN gives two shits or she got. Huh. Yes, I think ESPN very much cares. I think they very much care whether Clemson and Florida State end up in the SEC or Big Ten because if they end up in the Big Ten, that's two of your biggest cash cows that you don't you know you're, you're losing two of your bigger cash cows or two of your big your two biggest out of the ACC. And I do think ESPN has some influence here. We've seen it with with the the with the, with the um, downfall of the Pac-12. We saw it with Oklahoma and Texas moving over to the SEC. I don't think they have all the power, though. I just think they got some influence. But I also don't think Florida State wants to have anything to do with the ESPN. Just the way the the last years played out, getting the 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 playoff snub and all that. I. I think they've got their eyes set on the Big Big Ten, and that's where they want to go. Um, I can see a scenario in which ESPN tries to broker some kind of deal to the the ease the transition, but I don't. There, there's a lot in there that, about that tweet that some of the numbers just don't look right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I think the ESCN doesn't care near as much as she and Clemson because they're looking at the their TV markets. Honestly, Clemson and FSU don't give them you know, anything new. That yeah, they, see, I don't agree with that. I think that's that's the old way of looking at it. You know, it, it's not so much about television markets anymore as it is about eyeballs. Who brings the eyeballs? Because we're getting so much into streaming now. I don't think television markets play nearly as big a factor as they used to. And Florida State and Clemson bring the eyeballs. And so I, they're always going to have value. <clears throat> Ten years ago, yeah, I, it's all about television markets. The SEC's already got South Carolina locked up with, with the University of South Carolina. Um, I also don't know that, that – that, and this isn't necessarily – about ESPN, but I don't know that the that the SEC wants the Big Ten being able to put a recruiting for footprint down in the southeast either. So that's another factor in play here. It's going to make it fun to watch it play out because I, I think you got two big brands that I think both of them are going to have interest in it at some point. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, yeah. Even though we differ on FSU and Clemson and their uh, the eyeballs and ESC and stuff, think you know, that where this guy gets it wrong is his numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where he's got it bad wrong. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're going to have 
all of these your insider guys coming out in the next year, weeks and months saying that they have someone that is telling them that they have heard from you know, someone's sister's brother's cousin and who you know, is a janitor in the SEC offices that such and such is happening and honestly yeah all of this stuff see I'm pulling up this thing right here I've got I got the viewership numbers right here, but yeah, I'm with you, man. The the the, the numbers this guy's tweeting about, they just they don't make a whole lot of sense. Um they they I'm trying to find them right here. He's got this it's so long, but here you go. FSU and Clemson will pay an exit fee equal to what Texas and Oklahoma paid yeah. to exit the Big 12. But the ACC would retain the rights to FSU and Clemson home games, but then turn around and lease those rights to the ESPN for SEC broadcast. <laughs> I don't think there's any way that happens. Yeah. The ACC receives 50% of the fair market value in F of FSU and Clemson home games. The percentage the ACC receives would de decrease each year of that agreement. And I, I, I just don't see any way shape or form that it works out under those circumstances man those numbers just i don't know they just seem way out there yeah expect the percentage the acc <laughs> receives of fsu and clemson's tv rights to be negotiated down from the starting point of 50 percent, 35 percent is more likely Expect that to drop by three to five percent each year until it is zero. Yeah, I'd love to know where those numbers came from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just scrolling through there, and like, yeah, you know, honestly, it's like this cat, you know, just three hours in a hat and drew them out. Because they make zero sense. I, if, if this were the case, and if I some magical force, his source is right, and this is exactly what happens, what stops UNC, NC State, Duke, I am any other school from going, all right, you know, we're out too. They, they'd be at the courthouse within 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Even if they don't have a spot in the Big Ten or the SEC, they'd all want out. They could move to the Big 12 and they'd have, they, they'd get a better, they'd make more rev television revenue over there. That, yeah. That's the biggest problem with this. Old yeah, man. yeah. And so, yeah. Honestly, he says, "Here's my advice to ACC: Remember, to the uh, high tub. Uh, the ACC is going to, you know, be the equivalent of them if they were to agree to this." Because all of your, you know, teams like Clemson, FSU, UNC, even, you know, NC State, AUVA and stuff, are all going to go, you know what? If this is the way you're handling this, I want out too. 
Oh, absolutely. If if ESPN were to broker a deal that gets Florida State and Clemson to SEC, North Carolina and Virginia would be the first ones lining up saying, hey, we're we're done. We want the same deal. We're headed to the Big Ten. <laughs> and, the, you know, you the other ones you'd mentioned probably fall right in Miami. Uh, I'm not sure if they'd have a spot in the Big Ten or the SEC, but they'd at the very least have one in the Big 12, same with North Carolina State, Virginia Tech and they all make more television money than they would under this current deal that, that they have now with the ACC, which, yes, ESPN's got an option to pick it up. Um, but if ESPN picks that option up, you can't renegotiate the price. It's already fixed. It, it increases 4.5% every year, and it's, it's fixed through 2036. And if ESPN picks it up, they just pick it up at the same deal that they've had already. Um, so there's no renegotiating there. You already know what you're getting. Um, they, they, they would absolutely have better TV monies in the Big 12, any of those leftover teams that, that weren't a part of the power two. Yeah, and let's go ahead and assume for tits and gills that Clemson and has you you know, head to the SEC. Yeah. Right then there, that, yeah, if I am ESPN, there is no way that I am renewing a TV contract without your two cash cows. No way, no how. Even... Even at the bargain basement price, they're getting it at. You still you don't you don't pay uh, ACC without Florida State and Clemson. You don't pay those schools thirty, thirty five, forty million a year. That is, you just can't do it. No, I the ACC is going to you know be relegated to Jefferson Highland or. Yeah, Hawksburg South or a CW. Yeah, yeah, I. Yeah, so they are going to have to hear something. Yeah, Dale gets in ask a question. If he could choose which conference. Let's see, we already know that Jason is a huge uh, team guy. No, I'm just a big-time hater of the SEC. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more of the lesser of two evils. <laughs> yeah. To, to me, the thought of Clemson joining the SEC makes – I've said it probably half a dozen times it makes me throw up in my mouth. Um, not just a little bit. I can't, I, that would, my fandom for college football has decreased dramatically over the past 10 years. If Clemson joins the SEC, that probably kill it off <laughs> completely. <laughs> Cause I get it, man. You got all those. <laughs> I have just been programmed. You know, and it's the way the SEC is pushed yeah. on you by ESPN and, and the major media guys or the national media outlets. The way they have pushed that conference, I have just been programmed to hate everything about it and despise it just with every fiber of my being. And I, I'm, I'm a big fan of wanting to see somebody knock the big dog off the porch, not join the big dog on the porch. Yeah. But I also know I'm in the minority. Not everybody's going to think that way. All right. Most won't. So, the question isn't, you know, where do we think this ends up? I think he is asking... Yeah, our reference. Yeah, because that's my preference. I say, yeah, I say, yeah, the A10. Yeah. Yeah. 
at least try to put our stand high. Here we got a taste of it last year. Or I'm sorry, two years ago when we made the trip to South Bend for the Notre Dame game. Honestly, that was, you know, as close to a yeah, the 10 tight game as we have had. I can't imagine what it's like going to the horseshoe, going to the big house in October. Could you imagine the fans? How crazy they would go if Michigan came to Clemson. Yeah, there's some good matchups there in, in the Big Ten, but you know, and I get, I also understand that you can take those. You also got to take the Rutgers that comes along with. But in the SEC, you got to take the Kentuckys and the Vanderbilts, and um, it's just not all that much different. Um, you know, just just strictly from a football standpoint. You know, I understand that that most people's going to look at it that there are more built-in natural rivalries in the in the SEC. I don't care about that. Yeah. Um. You know, I just I I, I despise the SEC, man. It don't just mean more to me. It it, it <laughs> just means it just means hating it more. <laughs> you know, I I I think. Everything Clemson stands for, you know, when you go beyond football, I think the vision, it it kind of aligns more so with the Big Ten and the SEC yeah. outside yeah, of the fact God. that, that Clemson's an ACC football school plan. Yeah, the academics and those kind of things. Um, you know, the only thing that would suck about it is baseball. Um, and I And I'd get over that. Yeah, yeah, I guess your answer is cool. However, yeah, Jason would love to go there and see Hayden try. Yeah. <laughs> Coach and Luther and all I'm those guys. Say, give me Luther and Dauber. <laughs> Yes, sir. Showing our AJ a little there. Uh, I'd like to see Hayden Fry's wife. <laughs> I can't remember her name. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 I yeah. cannot remember her name to save the life of me. I can't even see. Christine. Yeah, that's it. I can hear Craig T. I can hear him <laughs> saying it now. Craig T. Nelson saying, Christine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sir. So, yeah, seeing uh, just right up here in Clemson and got to talk to a lot of uh, the players along with them after the game. So let's hear from K. Cody on his string, kind of what he is looking for this summer, and just hear from the Tigers. And I mean, how much, uh, how excited are you for this season? And you know, how much you think you've grown just over the past, you know, December, honestly. Yeah, uh, obviously, you know, super excited. Year three already. 
it's crazy. Um, but you know, I think we've had a really good spring uh, offensively and just taking what we learned last year and uh, just kind of putting it into play this offseason. So it's been really good, really exciting. Obviously, spring games can be tough at times, but, um, you know, obviously, you know, it was, it was fun to kind of get out there and get kind of in, in a game day environment, so it's fun. Mm -hmm. You definitely want to be improving on some things, you know, coming into your junior year upperclassmen now, but what have you focused on the most coming into this fall? This yeah, I mean, I think schematically, just taking what I've learned from last year's offense, um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of fun to run the same offense again, so that's been fun, and uh, just take what I learned throughout the season, throughout the games, um, just kind of, whether it's my schemes and stuff, just getting through stuff faster, um, that's been really fun, and just, you know, continuing to slow down the game, um, so yeah, it's been great. Would you feel like the offense did well today? Um... I thought we I thought we ran the ball really well. Um, I thought offensive line had a heck of a day. Um, I think they protected really well in the pro game um, and pass pro. And you know I thought we ran the ball. I think Jarvis and Streko both had a really good day. And obviously we had some good opportunities to get the ball down the field. You know the one with Adam and, and a few other ones. So you know I think that we'll just continue to uh, you know, continue to get the ball downfield. But I thought we did a really good job just you know playing catch sometimes. A couple of guys who put in a lot of work with the rest of the team, obviously, but don't get necessarily the playing time on Saturday has got to shine a little bit yeah. today. How rewarding is it to see that? Yeah, it's great. I mean, I think that that's kind of the, you know, the point of spring ball and especially the spring game, you know, have a couple of guys that Coach Swain decided to just kind of hold out and, um, you know, you, you kind of got to see some of the guys that y'all don't hear about a lot, like Josh Sapp, and, um, you know, making a heck of probably the play of the day, in my opinion, um, making one of the most unbelievable catches I've seen. Um, and then, you know, obviously Jarvis and Keith and, and Shreko just kind of getting the show out, and it was, it was really fun to, to see them kind of, you know, make some plays. So, yeah, let's see. A under However, I feel like yeah, it needs to be said for all of the fans that are out there I complain and yeah, worry about the O-line the Clothes like a the rain game in calm down. Yeah, this is a scrimmage where you had offensive lines up. You had, yeah, rain guys not. Running behind the line that is going to be out there in September. In fact, I heard a media there say, yeah, if this offensive line could lock their defensive line uh, today, then how the hell are they going to like Georgia's? Well, you know what? That is stupid and ignorant because the offensive line will come together. And so, yeah. If there is one thing I take away from K, it is his maturity like that I said he said last year yeah, if he was second and 12 or 13 that you know Clay could be out there trying to get everything all at once and this year he has seen him Take a check down or find an open guy and live to you know, make the next uh, the next uh, play closer or so you know. 
just calm down here out there worrying about this thing. I'm sure, Jason, that you heard, heard all the naysayers and woe is me and the offensive line sucks and, and stuff. So. We called Monday's show Overreaction Monday. Oh. <laughs> That's what I should have called it, man. I didn't think about it until after the fact. But I, I named it that on the spot once we went on there. But I, you know what? After I went back and watched it, I didn't think Cade was as terrible as being made out by some. He started out like two of six, and then he went 11 of his next 17, and he had at least two balls that were dropped that hit a guy dead in the hands. He's always going to be a guy that's going to put the ball in jeopardy at times. Um, mm -hmm. I thought he did that a time or two. Um, watching it live, I thought he did it three or four times. But watch, going back and watching the broadcast once or twice, um, he, he tends to believe in that arm and thinks he can fit it in anywhere. And you're going to have to live with that with him. But, again, I, I didn't think he was as bad as, as some are being made out. I actually had one viewer Monday night tell me that or made the comment about how it looks like I can't remember exactly what was said, something to the effect well, um, that that Chris Rump's the better hire over Matt Luke. I mean, the dude's had 15 practices to work with that offensive Are you line. Are serious? I can't, I can't remember exactly right. the way it was worded. He's had 15 practices to work yeah. with that offensive line, man. You know, it's, there's, it's an apples and oranges comparison first and foremost. There's so much more that goes into coaching – and getting a, a, a offensive line to being cohesive and, and up to snuff as opposed to getting your defensive ends ready to rush the passer and setting the edge and, and, and playing against the run and stuff. It, to me, that's apples and oranges. But um, I think you you, 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 loot, you use the spring to get all the assignment stuff down. I think Dabo talked a little bit about this Saturday. You know, they had been really good at the assignment stuff, and now they got to get the technique stuff cleaned up as they, you know, head into the summer and then move into fall camp. And that'll probably be the thing they need to work on most as they get ready for Georgia. I didn't think Lenthicum was was bad in the limited, you know, snaps he played before he left with a little little minor injury. And, and I didn't think Harris Sewell was as bad as some people made out. I know he, he's got to get a little bit better. His, his snaps are a little off target to the side, but he's been practicing for a month. I mean, he's been snapping for a month now. I didn't. I, I feel like I know about as much about the offense right now, maybe a little bit more than I did before the spring game. Antonio Williams looked so good Saturday, explosive. He's got that burst back, maybe a little more so than he had as a freshman. I think he's going to be such a big part of this offense. Bryant Wesco looks as advertised. Probably not going to start. Probably not going to play fifty snaps a game, but he is going to help you stretch the field. Um, Josh Sapp, Olsen, Pat Henry looks like they can give you some depth in that tight end room. And, you know, as far as the running game goes, we didn't see Phil Moffa. We barely yeah. saw Adams. We didn't see Jay Haynes. Those are probably your top three running backs. And you got to see one of them for six carries and the other two for nothing. I don't think there's anything to be taken away from, from the running backs in that game. Um, especially with the way that the spring games are set up. And, you know, I think there's a little bit of advantage for the defense. You know, they're running the same handful of plays over and over and over. It's almost like the defense probably knows what's coming most of the time. So, I mean, they're, they're going to have the advantage. But, again, I, I thought there was a lot of overreactions. You know, to me, the biggest thing is there's somebody in that quarterback room that's going to push Klubnik. It might not be who we thought it was going to be. But Trent Pyramid looks like he's going to be a guy that can push Clubnick. I'm not talking about beating him out for a starting job or anything like that. I do think he made his case to to maybe um, have a shot at competing for the backup spot. But I do think there is at least one guy in that room that can realistically, you know, kind of be that guy behind Clubnick that pushes him and gives him some realistic competition. He ain't the biggest of guys. He don't have to – strongest of arms 
but he processes things quickly. He gets the ball out, gets it where it's supposed to go, and he reads the field well. Um, and that's the kind of guy club that needs behind him, somebody that's efficient, productive, knows the offense, and, and can push him to be better. Yes, sir. Hey. Thank you, you sound great. So, I'll leave it there. I to kind of, let see here. Not sure if I can do it on this side uh, we are going to have a uh, little uh, Yeah, so I don't think I can do it here. Uh, our two handle, we are going to have a, a hole and basically we'd like to see if anyone is interested in uh, purchasing some of the side that we have, like your hat there, Jason. We are going to take some ors and get those or However, we just need to know if you're interested in uh, Getting that stuff, and so yeah, I think Monday night, Jason is going to be back with the Monday live, so you can catch up on all of the weekend stuff yeah we'll be right back here next Thursday and new also make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button as we have a lot of new stuff coming out in the next couple of weeks that we are very excited about. and the only way to make sure that you don't miss out is to subscribe and hit the like button. So, you have anything else you want to say? Right back here Monday night at 7. Then again next Thursday at 12. Yes, sir. So I'll let Jason go get his egg salad sandwich and turn on the masters and just enjoy a leisurely day. Hey, go, go.